Hey, what? Come on, got it. There we go. Good and good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Faces for Autism, streaming with love telephone. I'm Jacob Packett. Isabel's joining me for this interview today because we have a very special guest joining us this morning. She is. Here she is, <laughs> Miss New Jersey, Alyssa Sullivan. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me, Jacob. Thank you for that beautiful intro. That's one of the best intros I think I've I've ever received. So thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be back. Okay, Alyssa, I'll, I'll start. You were my co-host last year. Sadly, you couldn't go with me this year, but that's okay. I know. I have Miss Outstanding Team this year. Uh, first question, tell, tell the uh, viewing audience tonight your, your uh, start, your work with the special needs community. Absolutely. So for me, one of the uh, reasons that we connected is through my love for that and through my work with the Precious Gem Mentoring Program. So long before I ever became Miss New Jersey, my mom and I and a few people in the Miss New Jersey organization started the Precious Gem Mentoring Program, which was meant to be a special needs mentoring program for girls to come and really sort of have their Miss America moment. They're mentored by a girl that they get to really develop a relationship with. And really the want for all of that came from my mom being a special needs teacher for so many years and me being so passionate about working with kids with special needs. So it's something I'm really passionate about. So sad that we haven't been able to do it in the past few years because of COVID, but you know, we wanna keep all of, the, all of the girls safe, but it's really very, very special. And it's something that's very close to my heart. And the girl that I mentor, Caitlin, we grew up together. We went to high school together. We danced together from the time we were babies and we were still friends to this day. So it's exciting to sort of see those friendships flourish and those relationships last. So that's something I'm, I'm really proud of. Isabel, do you have any, I'll have you ask the next question. Well, I'll, I'll do a follow-up. How is that? Uh, you mentioned Caitlin and we have watched Caitlin blossom and grow. She's probably going to be watching the telethon. She might have a yeah. shout out for us. Yeah. Uh, I do know that because I was one of the volunteers very in the very beginning of the Precious Gem pageant and my daughter came with me and my daughter has a twin brother who has autism, she does not. And we cried the entire time. I know. <laughs> so ex could I, you explain a know. little bit about it for people? Because all I ha probably have some videos I can post later, but it yes. is just an unbelievable experience, not only for the participants, but for the people in the audience. Absolutely. I always say when, pe when people talk about this event, they always explain it as saying there's not a dry eye in the house. And it's true. Bring your tissues, buy the whole drugstore out of Kleenex because you're going to need them if you're coming to this event. I remember the first year that we did it, that a little girl, you know, we always make sure that every girl gets a crown, you know, everybody has their moment. And one of the girls got the crown placed on her head and she shouted out into the audience and she was like, dad, I'm so pretty right now. And we were just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, for so many of us, the women who are mentors, we're title holders in the Miss America organization. So for us, like that's like an everyday occurrence for us to be a part of this, but to see them get their moment, like that makes their whole life. You know, they think about this all year long. You know, Caitlin picks her dress out. She decides what her makeup's gonna look like over a year in advance. These girls are so excited about this. So it really is a phenomenal event and the people who come to it feel like it's really moved them and changed them to be a part of it. And of course, for us volunteers, I mean, we're there for them, of course, but they give so much back to us. It's it's really an event that you'll never forget, as you mentioned. Absolutely. And and one of the, the aspects of it is, as you just said, that, that the young lady who was up there saying, dad, I'm so pretty. Traditionally, people don't tie together. When you hear disabled, you immediately think, okay, well, they're not going to have an opportunity to showcase their beauty. We, um, we all have an inner beauty, obviously. Um, sometimes when you see somebody who is not recognized for this in that specific type of an event, it, it's just extra special because 
I remember some of these girls and I've watched them grow up over the years. And um, Isabella D'Alessandro was in one of the yeah. uh -huh. And Izzy is one of those people who has blossomed and grown through the process. I remember when they had the Miss New Jersey um, parade on the Ocean mm -hmm. City Boardwalk and we would go and represent and we would bring a bunch of the girls and I know a lot of them rode in and people don't believe me when I tell these things, they rode in convertibles and waved. And yeah. It's a beautiful experience. It, it really, it really is so beautiful. And, and again, it's so sad that we've had to postpone it the last couple of years, but again, even if that event, you know, had already occur only occurred for a couple of years, which of course we plan to continue it on, the impact that that has made for some of these young women, you know, it's going to last forever and it's changed them. As you've said, we've seen them blossom and come out of their shell and it's just, it's extraordinary. It really is so extraordinary. So it's exciting. So that's something I'm really excited to, to get back to doing now that hopefully we're nearing the end of, of the pandemic, as we would call the endemic. Well, <laughs> that's a good idea. I like that terminology. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a very good um, um, and that way to uh, put it, Alyssa, because we're in, we know COVID will not go, isn't going away. Absolutely. But now it's turning into uh, a flu where you get it once a year nine or 10 months out of the year, you're able to live an almost normal life. And For sure. I remember when we were having, the last time I saw you before COVID, I was with, yeah, I was with you. I was with you. We were in Dante Hall together and you said, to yeah. me, I want you to host my precious gem. And I said, you got me just uh, text me when you want me and COVID hit and I thought, ah, darn it, I can't host I my gym this year. But I then know. but then it was like, because we didn't see each other, so nobody for for a long time. Right. You know? In the beginning of COVID will will forever be ingrained in my memory because Isabel remembers this. I, I had something happen to me right in the beginning of COVID and I thought, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm not having something major done right in the beginning of the pandemic. But right. sadly, tomorrow is two, two years from it. And, you know, I'm happy that we're able to get back to almost normal in an endemic phase. Me too, absolutely. I'm glad we're we're coming out, coming out of it uh, in a positive way. I, I want because this ties right into what you do. Can you tell our listeners, yeah. our viewers, what you do for a living now? I mean, you could walk around for the rest of your life as Miss New Jersey. Um, <laughs> however, there are other things to do on the earth. So tell us about your gifts. Yeah. So. It's funny because as I was sitting at a local competition the other night, I was in the seats and I thought to myself, you know, I keep doing the countdown to how many days, how many months I have left as Miss New Jersey, but there reaches a point where it finally hits for you that it's getting ready to come to an end. And, you know, for me, I competed for Miss New Jersey for six years. So just getting that opportunity was like the greatest gift and blessing I could ever ask for. So I really treasure that. You know, a lot of people don't understand that Miss New Jersey is a job. So just as much as I do my other jobs, I'm doing that and it's something that I really pour into. But when I'm not being Miss New Jersey, I uh, have my reporter hat on and I work at PHL 17 as a feature reporter there. And they've been really wonderful with allowing me to balance my schedule and kind of pull back and, you know, be there when I can to really still get to fulfill my dream of being Miss New Jersey. So one of the things I've always loved about Miss America is especially as we've rebranded in recent years, is to really push the fact that these are working women who are driving forces for change in the community. And it was always sort of thought of in my mind that, oh, if I win Miss New Jersey, I have to halt the rest of my life for a year. And that's just not the case, especially nowadays. And I really love that because just as much as I am Miss New Jersey, I am Alyssa 
Alexa, first and foremost, and that's my identity, you know, and I get to do all the things that I love and be a reporter and feature businesses and my those areas of my life really mesh very well. So it's exciting to get to show people who I am beyond just the crown and the sash. And sometimes it's nice to go to appearances and sometimes I won't wear the crown. Maybe I'll just wear the sash or maybe I'll just wear a pin because um, sometimes, you know, the crown and the sash is wonderful, but sometimes people are blinded by that and then they don't always see that you are a person underneath that. So there's a lot of layers to it and it's just, it's so exciting and so rewarding and I'm soaking up every bit of these last uh, two and a half, three months. Well, I was going to say, excuse me, Jacob, I was going to say, I I see it now. There's an article, blinded by the sash. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a great headline. Yeah, that's a great headline. And I mean, as I said before we started, I was one of the lucky ones to be there the night you were crowned. And I mean, it's just one of the, I remember I'm, I'm going out of the resorts and I said to my mom, you know, my grandmother was a Miss America hostess for mm-hmm. 35 wonderful, blissful years. And I thought, you know, seeing a friend in Miss New Jersey is bringing a piece of my childhood back. Oh, that's so sweet. I, and I, I love that. And especially for, for our friendship and us coming together as friends, but really too, that, you know, us living in New Jersey and in Atlantic City, we're so lucky to be so close to a part of that history. And it's been really exciting since Miss New Jersey has moved to Atlantic City in the past few years. Even though Miss America was not in Atlantic City this year, I kind of felt like I got that Miss America moment being crowned in Atlantic City. And that was really so special. And, you know, people talk about that night of me becoming Miss New Jersey and, you know, say it'll be one they'll never forget. And certainly for me as well. I mean, it's just a blur, but just sheer excitement and gratitude and you know in my mind if i had come to really accept that whatever was meant to be was going to happen and if i wasn't miss new jersey i felt like i had accepted that but you know it was just so so wonderful that it happened and and i feel just grateful for that yeah and and you know i said it i said it to isabella freund who was my co-host uh during the eight o'clock hour for those of you that watched it You know, I've never taken an opportunity for granted. I've never said, oh, one day I'll be friends with Miss New Jersey, get to work with the MEO. No, I've taken every opportunity that's come come staring right at me and taking every little bit for granted. So from me, to Isabel, to all the others that were were able to take part in your year this year. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Um, last question, well, well uh, next question. Um, so tell us about your social impact initiative. Absolutely. So my social impact initiative is called Peer Challenge Commit to Character, and it deals with speaking to New Jersey youth about risk-taking behaviors. That's anything from bullying to drinking to drugs to cyberbullying uh, to teen pregnancy. And I'm so passionate about it because this is something I've been advocating for for over 10 years. So I've been able to take this initiative to the New Jersey House of Representatives, speak on the House floor, to the Senate. It's been just so rewarding. To me, this all started because I was a high school student who felt that we weren't getting enough character education curriculum. And I really always, you know, was raised by my family to believe that, you know, it's not, uh, there's nothing wrong with making the right choices just because maybe the crowd isn't doing it. Um, And that always really stuck with me. And so I really felt like it was my duty. And then once I became a part of the Miss America organization, I really even had more of a platform to promote that. So I've been able to travel to thousands of New Jersey and speak to kids about character education and and to educators as well and to really just try to pave the way you know to continue to educate them and and not just think that teens don't want to make the right decisions um so it's something that i'm I'm really proud of and passionate about yeah and and i 
and I've had one of my alma maters has reached reached out to me at Seekin Public Schools and said to me, I see Miss New Jersey's uh, the social impact is peer challenge. Could, could you get her for us? I said, I, I can do my darndest and try, <laughs> but I, I will, I will, uh, I will give you the email and you have to set it up because I don't want people confusing what, what I'm doing. If I, if I ask for you to come to the field, I don't want them confusing what I'm, what I'm doing as a conflict of interest to somebody else. Well, the great thing is about, you know, when you meet people and you network and you connect with people, it's great because it creates more opportunities and you connect people. So, so that's sweet. So always love an opportunity, you know, or a privilege to be able to go in into a school. So that to me, I view that as something that is an honor and to be able to go in and speak to people's children. And, you know, as we always say, mold young minds, um, that's just very important to me and, and something that I'll always be passionate about, even after I miss New Jersey. So. That's beautiful. Isabel, do you have, have any, well, another sure. question? Well, I can relate it to, we could start small and then go globally. Um, the Miss New Jersey um, history, I'm sure you know all about, um, but I love that you talked about the origins being in Atlantic City. My dad was from this area growing up. And he, he has passed now, but his favorite childhood memory, his mom used to take him on the boardwalk. And um, he was born in 1935. So let's say it was like 1939, something like that, 38, 39. Walking on the boardwalk, it was his birthday, September 15th. Okay. So at that time, all of the, the contestants stayed in one hotel maybe, I don't know, the Marlboro Blenheim or something or other. So I don't really know which one it was. My dad told me the story that he was walking with his mom and all of these women started walking out of the hotel. And he said, and all of a sudden they said, oh, look at this cute little boy. And every single contestant kissed him. So, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> so sweet. So That's he said, so cute. It's like, like, yeah. He says he lived a charmed life. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, like, it's like memories like that. Like, and Miss America always said to us, you know, when we were in Connecticut, they say, you know, we're just people. People view the Miss America candidates as being these extraterrestrial beings, you know, like they're not like real. And, you know, everybody puts them on this pedestal, which is totally okay because in a sense because that's part of tradition right like miss america is a healer she she makes an impact on people but then you know you really have to view the great responsibility with it that for you you're seeing people every day but that may be the first time that someone ever meets a miss america candidate or a miss new jersey or somebody else and it's always your responsibility to affect them in a positive way and to make them feel that they matter and that you remember them. And so like for your dad, like that will stick with, you know, stuck with him forever. And it's moments like that, that seem so small to you, but make such a difference for somebody else. And that's just really so important. And, you know, you have one year to make a difference and to make an impact and, you know, living where we do in New Jersey, we are so attached to Miss America and in so many good ways. And, you know, as a kid, my mom used to take me to the Atlantic City Boardwalk and we would see the Show Us Your Shoes Parade. And, you know, even being a part of it now, I don't know that it's ever truly hit me, you know, that that, that is me. I think one day it will, but um, it certainly goes fast as it has. And, and I know that, um, you know, when I pass the crown on the week of June 20th, that I won't have any regrets and that I'll know that, you know, I lived it doing everything that I wanted to do, you know, surrounded by the people who have really supported me. And, you know, it's bittersweet, you know, to be to be able to pass it on. But, you know, the end of a, of a beautiful chapter for me. Absolutely. And it's changed over the years, the meaning behind it. However, it grows with our generations. And um, one of my, my, my personal memory is that, um, well, growing up watching it on television as a child, but in the 80s, I worked in the casino industry and the beautiful hotels there. We all, each, uh, each hotel 
got five contestants, I believe it was something like that or right. 10. So I was the hotel concierge and I was fresh out of college. My job was one I never thought I would get. Um, I had to deal with all of the VIPs. So, oh my gosh. So back then, over a space of five years, I dealt with the hosts, Gary Collins and Mary Ann Mobley were the hosts mm -hmm. at that time. So I got to work with them and that was so much fun. Then um, at one point it was Kathy Lee Gifford, but before it was yes. Kathy Lee Gifford, I had Regis and Kathy Lee and I got to work with them. And I remember her coming in and it was the day Frank Gifford, day after he proposed to her and they were in the lobby with me. And oh my gosh. All of this over Miss America. It was the most amazing thing. So that's crazy. Um, and I remember her coming up to me and she was just so normal. It was really a lovely thing. I yeah. just thought of that. I forgot all that's yeah. been filed away for 35 years. So my yeah. goodness. But, it's like, uh, and it's, it's those like normal, it's those instances, you know what I mean? That really, that just really matter for people. And, you know, I, I have a funny, I have a funny story. My grandmother, as I said, she was, she was a Miss America hostess and she had a few Miss Americas over her time. And she had Chantel Smith. Yes. Okay. Chantel wins. And my grandmother has to put, place this big dinner for her. <laughs> and, and my grandfather, Barry, gets more applause than she does when she introduces Miss America. <laughs> It was, it was hysterical. That's so funny. That's so um, funny. Um, um, Alyssa, um, if you have any advice for any future Miss Americas or Miss Outstanding Teens, what would you say to them? I think my advice would just really be for young women in general that never believe that there's anything that you can achieve. You know, it's funny, this month is International Women's Month, but we should always be celebrating women and what they can do. And I think that it really is so fitting with Miss America's mantra, their motto is that we are preparing great women for the world, but we're also preparing Bring the world for women because the world just has a little bit of catching up to do. So Miss America can change lives, whether you never become Miss New Jersey or Miss America and you just walk away with thousands in scholarship and you're able to graduate debt free and do wonderful things. You know, just embrace that life is a beautiful journey. And for me, you know, that end result when you get to the top of the mountain, you know, for me, that was becoming Miss New Jersey. That was great and it was wonderful, but uh, that was not the moment that changed me as a person. It was all those moments along the way. So I think really just embrace not knowing and accepting that it's a beautiful journey where we're going to learn about ourselves and, and, you know, taking a chance on Miss America or trying to compete or be a part of it can really be so rewarding for you. And so, you know, no matter what I do, I'll, I'll always have so much love and gratitude for the Miss America organization. And, and so I hope young women can, can see that too. And one more thought in in closing is that it's nice to see the amount of Miss America contestants this year alone who supported special needs. It made and I know Isabel probably paid attention to that. Well well I went as a Christmas gift my mom gave me a Christmas gift and the gift was very nice. It was a she paid for me to see Miss America all online. And I'm, and I'm sitting there on my computer watching Miss America and I'm listening to their social impact. I'm like, wow, these girls wanted something for the differently able community. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. That's so, that's so important. And I saw a lot of love and passion for that at Miss America. And to me, that, that shouldn't be newfound. You know, everybody should have that. And that's something that is great that not just I'm passionate about it, but that others are too. And so that makes me really happy. And, and, you know, I love both of you and I'm so grateful that I could be on here today and talk with you guys. And, and I know that the rest of the telethon will be really special. Well, I have one. Can, can I ask one thing that you do? I don't know if you've done this already. Yeah. Can you have a split screen and do two different outfits in the future where Alyssa Sullivan interviews Miss New Jersey before you leave? 
that's a good idea. That would be a really good idea. I've never done that before, but it's a good thought. That would be really smart. You're giving me headlines and you're giving me interview ideas. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good idea. That would be, there's definitely advanced enough technology for me to be able to interview myself. I think it would be so much fun. <laughs> But that's Absolutely. a very good idea, guys. I like that idea. Friends, uh, we have Miss New Jersey here. Please donate the faces. We were able to raise $11,000 last year. We can only do better this year. Thankfully, the pandemic is reaching an endemic phase. Friends, please donate. Uh, these organizations, Miss New Jersey supported Faces, she's been a friend of Faces for a very long time. Please, Sony, thank you. <laughs>